This week on Tech Stuff Tuesday, we're going to look at bench testing. And this is something that we do for all the subs that we build in house, especially if it's something we've never built before, uh, like this, for example, a Sundown Audio Team 10 inch. Now, you may have seen the other video on the complete building of this sub. So now we've got to bench test it. We've had a lot of requests to see this thing moving, and that's part of bench testing. So we have this connected to our bench. We have these quick terminals so we can uh, pop them in and out very easily without taking wires uh, constantly in and out. So it's just these two things, pushing the terminals, slide those in. We do that on every sub. Works out great. Uh, we do not have gigantic wire on it because we're not putting a ton of power on it. We're going to do this free air, which doesn't usually take a whole lot of power to get these moving. Uh, to get this full stroke, uh, it very well may only be uh, 800 or uh, less watts, possibly even. Um, probably not more than 1,000 watts or so. And we're not going to have it moving for a long period of time except for break-in. So what we're going to do first on this is we need to get it broken in some. The reason we're going to get this one broken in first is because we need to pull parameters off of it. We've never built this before. The owner of it would like the parameters. And I'm curious to see how this came out as well. Should we build any of these in the future if there's anything that we want to change? While it's breaking in, we're going to listen for various noises. Uh, we're going to check for any type of rattling or knocking or anything uh, irregular um, outside of just having the pole vents on the bottom here blocked. Um, this is an extremely heavy sub uh, and having it tilted. Uh, this one we could lay on the side, um, but I don't want it to roll away or vibrate or anything like that. So this is the safest way to do this. Um, we shouldn't generate enough heat to where it causes a problem for the coil, but we may hear some different velocity noises from uh, the vent on the spacer uh, or at the motor here. Um, but outside of that, uh, we shouldn't hear anything irregular. If we do, we'll stop, see what's going on. Now, after we do the break-in process, assuming we don't hear any noises, which we shouldn't, then we'll move on to doing a full range of frequencies. Uh, and then we'll listen for a different kind of noises, buzzing, popping, same other thing like that. Uh, one thing that we will uh, make sure that we're aware of is one thing that came up in comments on the other video was mechanical clearances. Uh, it had been mentioned that because the uh, center pole piece is so much higher on this than a lot of other subs, uh, and this being a 10 inch that it was originally not designed for, that that center pole piece might hit the dust cap. So that's one thing that we're going to check and make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, I have measured it. This can physically only move about 30 millimeters one way uh, before we exhaust uh, what we can do on the surround itself, and that would be going fully stretched till it's flat. Um, we've got 30 millimeters that it can move and about 35 millimeters before it'll hit. So this shouldn't hit at all. Uh, I plan on that ahead of time, but that is something that may have been overlooked in a build. Uh, that's one of those things that before you go through all the effort of putting it in a car that you might want to check. So first, we're going to play 20 hertz for about 10 or 15 minutes. Get some good uh, break in on this as much as we can do without playing it for an enormous amount of time. Then we'll come back to it and do a larger range of testing on the frequencies. So now that we've run this at 20 hertz at nearly full throw for some time, it's quite a bit softer. It's still stiff, but it is softer. So we're going to run this through a wider bandwidth. Uh, the reason that we're going to do this is at lower frequencies, the cone's going to move a whole lot more uh, than higher frequencies. But at higher frequencies, if you have something like a dust cap that's not secured quite all the way or um, some other kind of misalignment, you might hear that buzzing at a higher frequency that you don't at a lower frequency. So we're going to go through a whole bandwidth and this particular track is intended to test the full range of things. Um, it has a massive shift uh, as well as different frequencies. So if there's anything weird going on, you can hear it. Uh, so let's get to that.
Okay, so we have no noises other than from uh, the venting as I expected. Uh, there's a whole lot of air that's being pushed through there that's cooling the coil and nowhere for it to go on the bottom. So everything checks out there. No funny noises up here. There's no uh, mechanical uh, smacking between the dust cap and the pole. Everything is good to go. So from this point, uh, normally for just quality control testing, uh, we would just put it in a box, ship it out to the customer and be fine. This one, since we're doing a full bench test for mechanical and parameters, we're going to take parameters, so we'll have those for the customer. And here we have all the parameters on this sub. It's a dual 2 ohm, which in series uh, ends up being 2.9. Uh, each coil is actually closer to about 1.4. FS is 43 and a half hertz. Now I know what you're thinking, that's way too high, that's not going to sound very good. This particular customer is only playing music that's around 45 hertz and up. This is specifically what he requested to have a higher FS like this, and for his application, it's going to work very well. If I was going to build it for a different application playing lower frequencies, 30 hertz uh, or lower even, I would use uh, different parts. It would be built quite a bit differently. But this is built specifically for how he needed it, so that's what I did. So the suspension compliance is pretty good. He'll have a pretty good excursion with uh, the higher frequencies that he'll be playing. We have good motor force. The moving mass uh, is not completely out of control. That is a very heavy coil though. Uh, so that is a consideration. And uh, the sensitivity doesn't really mean a whole lot. Uh, that will be in a, a coming video comparing with subs. We've already done that on mids. I'll put the link for that below. So everything we have here is exactly how we need it. And if you've hung out this long, now you can watch it in slow motion. If you'd like to support the channel, you can shop our website at emfcaraudio.com for all of our EMF audio goodies, as well as Sundown Audio, XS Power, Audio Control, and SBC. You can also support us on Patreon. The link for that is below. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook as well. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell. If you have any questions about this video, post them below. If you have any comments, post those below. If you have any questions, post those and we'll answer them as quickly as we can. And I'll see you again on another Tech Stuff Tuesday.